My name is Lucas Owen. I uncover the most cutting edge health information on the planet, ranging from hormones, nutrition, supplementation, fat loss, biohacking, longevity, wellness, and a whole lot more. Welcome to the Boost Your Biology podcast. By now, I'm sure most of you know about the benefits of vitamin D to increase testosterone when levels are suboptimal. What I'm going to do is look at how a specific vitamin known as biotin, which is a type of B vitamin, how megadosing biotin may be able to increase testosterone levels in humans. So what is biotin? So biotin is also known as vitamin H. B vitamins are water-soluble. And so biotin is a water-soluble vitamin that plays an important role in many biochemical processes in the human body. Now, that phrase water-soluble basically means that you do not need to take B vitamins with food to adequately, adequately absorb them. So you can consume these B vitamins without food and still get their beneficial effects. You do not require fats to um, absorb and utilize these B vitamins. Now, one of the primary functions of biotin is to help convert food into energy as it is involved in the metabolism of, of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. So biotin helps to convert um, glucose into ATP. Now, biotin also supports healthy skin, hair, and nails, as well as the nervous system and supports liver function. Now, biotin supplements are often used to help treat or prevent biotin deficiency, which can cause symptoms such as hair loss, skin rash, and neurological problems. Now, here's a really big word of caution with uh, blood testing and biotin. So if you're supplementing with high doses of biotin, these can actually, well, the net effect can be that biotin supplementation in doses of above one milligram can actually distort and interfere with certain blood test results, including your TSH, T4, and T3 result, um, and, have, and other assessments used to measure cardiac markers. So if you are taking biotin supplements, it's extremely important that you discuss this with your healthcare provider. Um, and those men that have joined the Limitless program will have heard me already talk about how megadosing um, megadosing a biotin actually lowered my own TSH value. Um, and I did that deliberately to see how taking biotin can distort and falsely produce um, a specific result in my blood test. So those men that have joined the Limitless program will know exactly what I'm talking about. So the famous study, biotin enhances testosterone production in mice and their testes derived cells. Now, interestingly, pharmacological doses of biotin has been shown to ameliorate diabetes and high blood pressure. Several studies show that extremely high doses of biotin influence hepatic and testes morphology, sperm quality, and spermatogenesis. However, the involvement of administered biotin on steroidogenesis in testes has not been clarified well. In the present study, the authors investigated the effect of biotin on testosterone production in mice and their, and their testes-derived tumor cells in which steroidogenesis is regulated by the cyclic AMP PK, PKA pathway. And what the authors noted was that they found that biotin treatment enhances testosterone production in mice and in testes-derived cells and in the cases of cells via elevation of cyclic AMP levels. Now, looking at that mechanism of action, you can probably think back to another supplement that also increases cyclic AMP. It starts with F, uh, but basically just, I'm just gonna give it away. So it's forskolin, coleus forskolin, um, and also caffeine can also increase cyclic AMP or CAMP levels. Um, so we can see that thing, compounds that stimulate cyclic KMP may be able to induce testosterone production. Now, a little bit more about the research itself. Uh, Leydig cells in the testes are steroidogenic and testosterone synthesis is tightly regulated by luteinizing hormone secreted from the anterior pituitary gland, 
which is part of the hypothalamic pituitary testicular axis. Now, they measured serum luteinizing hormone levels after intraperitoneal injection of biotin, which increased testosterone production without changing luteinizing hormone levels. This suggests that biotin increases testosterone production by directly acting on the steroidogenic cells in the testes. Now, several studies have also indicated that food ingredients, including vitamins, can regulate testosterone production in a similar manner as dietary supplementation of menaquinone 4, a type of vitamin K2, could stimulate testosterone production in male rats and mice, respectively, without the alteration of blood luteinizing hormone levels. Um, On the other hand, ginger, onion, and their extracts have been demonstrated to show enhancement of testosterone production in in animal experiments with or without the modulation of luteinizing hormone levels. Now, here's some even more evidence. This study here was titled Testicular Function in Biotin Deficient Adult Rats. And what they noted was that biotin treatment of biotin deficient rats reversed this condition, whereas testosterone treatment was without any effect. So they basically noted that um, testosterone function is compromised in biotin deficient rats And also, interestingly, estrogen serum concentration increased 49.2% in biotin-deficient mice. So we can see that estrogen may be affected in humans, potentially, if we're deficient in um, biotin. Now, as far as dosages are concerned with biotin, in humans, 16 milligrams of biotin daily for a week completely restored glucose metabolism in insulin-dependent patients for whom insulin therapy had been withdrawn. In other words, biotin effectively substituted for insulin therapy. Now, in addition, the study replicated the reported results in humans by using a genetically uh, diabetic mouse model. And the biotin doses used in the mouse study were equivalent to 15 milligrams and 30 milligrams per day for a human, with the 30 milligrams having a stronger effect at lowering blood glucose and lowering hyperinsulinemia. So the reason why I'm talking about how biotin can affect blood sugar stability is that if you do decide to supplement with biotin in high doses, and I mean anything above five milligrams, biotin in high doses can massively lower blood sugar levels. So you need to be pretty careful if you're using high-dose biotin. I know when I was supplementing with biotin, Uh, many years ago to boost my testosterone as high as possible naturally, um, I did experience hypoglycemic episodes. Um, So you really need to be careful with um, how many grams of carbs you're eating. I had to massively increase my carbohydrate intake to offset the um, hypoglycemic effects. So interestingly, daily supplementation with a highly concentrated formulation of biotin, 100 to 600 milligrams for several months was also found to be well tolerated in individuals with progressive multiple sclerosis. So personally, what I think is a viable strategy dosage um, as a test or a means to improve testosterone production would be anywhere from 10 milligrams to 16 milligrams daily. Um, That's my approach and my thoughts on this subject matter. And just a reminder, different food sources of biotin, you can see this was actually taken from one of my favorite websites, the Linus Pauling Institute. Um, We can see food sources of of biotin include uh, yeast, bread or whole wheat, egg cooked, um, cheese, liver, pork, salmon, avocado, raspberries, and cauliflower. Um, So there are some biotin-rich foods. So that pretty much wraps up today's podcast episode. If you learned something new, please do me a favor and leave a five-star review for the podcast channel. Otherwise, guys, thank you so much for listening in. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.